morning. How is everyone today? Good. It's good to see so many people here. It's great. Now, we'd like to welcome you today. Our series is about discovering. So exciting. And we are going to discover who knows each other the best, aren't we, Jamie? Absolutely, we are. So, if you think you know somebody particularly well who you're sitting next to today, the stage is open to you. We are looking for three pairs of volunteers. Just imagine. Let's see some hands. If you don't volunteer, we'll pick you. One at the back. Who's your partner, Matt? Matt, Matt and John, come take a seat. Ready? Let's have another pair of people that know each other particularly well. This will be the ultimate test to see if you actually do know that person as well as you can It will be awesome. I'm thinking, I can choose. What about Alan and Glenny? Would you guys come up? Come on, Fantastic. come on. yes. Woo! Alan, the cameras are fine, come up on stage. Yes, great. I think now would be a good time to inform everybody that there are actually prizes for the pair that does yes. the best. Prestigious prizes we have today. Ones that might make me rig the game so I win. Really good prizes. One more pair. <gasps> Megan and Serena. Megan and Serena. I think we can do it. Come on, girls. Let's go. Don't let the team down, guys. Come on. Well done. Let's turn into Megan and Zalia. Team Blonde, welcome to the stage. All right, let's give a hand for our fantastic volunteers. And, uh... Brilliant. So, episode two of Imagine If. For those of you that don't know how to play, I'll quickly explain the rules. On the screen, you'll get a question that comes up, and we'll go pair by pair. So the first pair, for example, will be Matt and John. So a question will come up on the screen and everybody will be able to see the question and answers except the person who's guessing. So let's say it's Matt first. So Matt, you turn around on the screen and we'll get a question up first. The question will read something to the effect of, imagine if John were whatever. And then John would pick his favorite answer and then you have to try and match it. That makes sense? Okay, brilliant. Does anybody have any questions? Let the games begin. Okay, so pick a person in your pair to face the screen. All right, so should we start with Matt and John? Yes, let's do that. Okay. All right, Matt and John, your first question on Imagine If today. John. Imagine if Matt were a piece of advice, what would he be? Trust no one. Be honest at all times. Never walk under a ladder. Dress for success. Marry a millionaire. Or eat all your vegetables. So, you're gonna tell us which number, if you can, can you read it on the little screen out there? <laughs> Quite far away. You think five? Ooh. Well, Matt actually chose number two. Be honest at all times. And John, I'm glad you've been honest in this question. So thank you, thank you. Um, look, we'll see how we go with our other couples. If someone beats you, we might have to send you back to the audience, but well done for the first round. Okay, next pick, Glenny and Alan. Glenny, imagine if Alan, oh no, we have the next question please, sorry. Thank you. Glenny, imagine if Alan were awakened in the night by a burglar. What would he do? Would he go back to sleep and rely on the insurance? Scream? Wake his or her partner up and demand action? Tackle the burglar to the ground? Sneak out and phone the police? Or attempt to counsel the burglar? Alan 
actually chose number five. Close, Sneak close. out and phone the police. Wow. Let's help you guys. Hopefully you guys don't get burgled anytime soon. <laughs> All right, well, should we go on to our next pair? So far, we're having a great run. All right, so imagine if... Can we have... Oh, here we go. Imagine if Zalia had to live in the land of endless season. Which season would she choose? Spring, summer, autumn, winter, football or duck season? Megan, what's your thoughts? Congratulations! Well done. Okay, so we have one pair who have done particularly well. Let's go through again and see if anyone else can get any as well. All right, let's see. Jamie, can you take the next question for us for Matt and John? I absolutely can. Should we should we switch it up and make them turn around? Yes, yes. So All right, so face Matt facing the, the front. Direction. Good call, Brie. Okay, Matt. Imagine if John were a special vehicle. Which would he be? Vehicle. Would he be a tank? An ambulance? A parade float? A garbage truck? An ice cream truck? Or a limousine? John, can we have your answer, please? Just hold up the number. Ooh. Unfortunately, that is not correct. John has indicated that he would be an ice cream truck. <laughs> Alrighty, next pair, Glennie and Alan. Okay, Alan. Imagine if Glennie were a timepiece. Which would she be? A stopwatch, a biological clock, a grandfather clock, an oven timer, an electronic diary, or a time bomb? Okay. Oh. All right. Alan, your answer was number two, a biological clock. But actually, Glenny said she was. Yes. <laughs> well done, well done. All right, let's move on to our third pair. All right. Final question. Talia. Imagine if Megan were a sportsman, what would she be? Would she be hitting below the belt? Substance abuse, scratching and biting, delaying tactics, audible obscenities, or headbutting the umpire? Megan, which Answer was number three, scratching and biting. Oh, it's even more rough, actually. I think. <laughs> it's been a pretty close round. I think should we have like a winner takes all last question? Okay, let's do that. Winner takes all. Do we have yeah. enough questions left? We're good. We've got the thumbs up from the tech team in the back. Thank you very much. So maybe if we stay how we are and we'll read the question and whoever thinks they can guess it or get it right. Good idea. So everyone's answering at the same yes, time. Yes. Okay. Let's so try it. this will be a test of speed and understanding. The ultimate test. Okay. Final question three. Did you do the honors? Sure. If unnamed were a TV catchphrase, what would he or she be? Beam me up, Scotty. Go. Nope. And now for something completely different. Oh, we've already got an answer. Who loves your baby and loving it? Your mission, should you choose to accept it. First matching pair wins. Oh, we have a matching pair oh. here, Megan and Talia. Your mission, should you choose to accept it. Congratulations, we have some prizes for well you. Well done, Talia and Megan. You are Imagine of Champions for today. Woo. Let's give a round of applause for everybody. Thank you so much for the rest of our contestants. Maybe go home and talk about things, learn each other a little bit better.
Can we have our winners just back on the stage just for a second to accept their prizes? Or I will keep them. Actually, you guys sit down, that's right. Thank you for being a part of episode two of today's Imagine We hope you enjoy the service today. Have a good one. Yeah. <laughs> what did the pirate say on his birthday? Are you coming? He said, I am 80. <laughs> we are gonna slaughter this. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're watching this video, that means you're at Grayscale, so welcome. <laughs> Today we are playing Pirates and Cowboys. Cowboys and Indian. Plot twist, the Indian is the cowboy. Girl. I'm a girl, I think. Tonight here at Beautiful Grayscale, we have... Family Night! Doo -doo. Hosted by Lindsay and Roz. Okay. <laughs> Hint, we have a new popcorn machine. I, yes, I saw it. <laughs> so if you were planning on anything else this evening that was gonna cost you a lot of money, come to Grayscale. It's gonna be awesome entertainment for kids, for the whole family actually. Popcorn. And there's gonna be popcorn, yes. Popcorn! It will start at 6 p.m. Don't miss it. Next up. <laughs> for everyone who's confirmed a booking with Robin with regards to going to Waiheke for a scooter ride, tomorrow morning at 8.30 we'll be meeting at Grayscale, departing to go scootering all around the island. And if you'd like any more info uh, with regards to what you need to bring with, just speak to Robin and he'll give you more info about that. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. If you're between the age of 10 and 13, we know what you're doing on the 18th to the 20th of April, you are going on a camp in Waihi. <laughs> if you're a fan of the Hunger Games, guess what? You get to be a part of it. Dun, 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 dun. If you would like to come along to it, just hop online or get your parents to hop online. www.gracegate.org Or you can just go and speak to Zalia. And she'll give you more info. But wait, there's more. If you are older than 10 or 13 and you are very sad at this point in time that you cannot be attending the Hunger Games camp, we have something in store for you. <laughs> the Fuel Camp will be happening on the 20th to the 22nd of April, just after the Radio Camp. And everyone from age 14 to 17 can attend this camp, which will be held at... It's Alia's farm. You're Yui. You're Yui. You're a Yui. You're a newie. <laughs> and if you'd like to register for that, you can go online as well, or you can just speak to Zalia and she'll hook you up with a registration form. With somehow. the dudes? Mm. So if you're between the age of 7 to 18 and you know that you're going to be on holiday because school is closing soon and you have no idea what to do with yourself, on the 27th to the 29th of April, these are the official dates. We've been giving wrong information before. I'm going to apologize for that. But for those three days, we are going to be having the Soul Performance Arts Holiday Program run by Brie. And it's going to be three days full of dance, drama, theater, fun. It's just going to be everything awesome regarding creativeness ness and funness and you get to be cowboys yeah. you get to be aliens anything <laughs> you want if you would like to get any more information around that please speak to Bree and she will, will gladly assist you please assist them Bree please please Go somewhere over the rainbow if you would like to see the outcome of this amazing holiday program. Then on the 30th of April, you get to see all of it come together in this amazing showcase called Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Whoa! What was that? What happened? The chair broke. <laughs> oh boy. Break the chair? No, that happens. So uh, now um, we are going to have a program. This is a good program. Mm. You in the front row. Glad you came today. I think there's someone in the front row. <laughs> if you're sitting next to somebody and their stomach is growling, just comfort them with these words. There is food. After the program though, so you might have to listen to them rumbling. <laughs> to them <laughs> stomachs rumbling. Throughout the program, but you know, that's okay. Because we're all in this together. And by the end of the program, we'll get food. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Have a great day and hope you enjoy the program and we'll see you again next week. Oh, I've got click for this now. You can click louder. Wow, that's rubbish.
You need to work on that. Wow. Stereo. What is that? Okay, stop. When last did you discover how great God is? Recently? I hope everyone has had some time in their lives when they can look back on it and say, Wow, God is just amazing. And um, I'd like to invite the people to come forward who, who will take up the um, donation today. For the sake of our visitors, um, please don't feel like you need to contribute. This is for the regulars who attend here. And it's merely to keep the amazing programs running that Grace Gate has in place. So if you just come forward. I'd like to share with you a story when I discovered just how amazing God is. And you know, we grow up hearing like, God is amazing, God is love. And it sounds like a story that belongs to someone else. And I tended to think that as well. There was a time in our life, Robin and myself, where um, I had stopped working because we had just um, had Jesse join our family. And suddenly Robin was retrenched. And I was like, wow, God, really? Are you really going to leave us in the lurch now when we have a family that's grown? And where's our income going to come from? And how could you really leave us in the lurch this way? And I had a real problem with it, and I kept fighting with God about it. And at some point, I just decided, okay, God, I'm going to trust you in this because maybe it wasn't you that had Robin retrenched. I don't know. I couldn't make sense of it. But what I did know was that the Bible promised that when you place your trust in God, He is your provider, and He'll look after you no matter what happens. And man, it was a year or so had gone by, still no job, still living off of savings, and I don't know if it was even closer to two years with no income, but it was a long time, and I knew that our savings were growing really thin. And so we were living on piecemeal, you know, whatever we could make stretch the longest in the kitchen, and um, making sure Jesse was fed. <laughs> And then one day we came home from church and someone had put outside our door a few grocery bags and in those grocery bags was a pocket of potatoes, a pocket of butternut, a bag of onions and a packet of rice. And that was like a feast, man. I phoned my friend Elaine who was really battling almost as bad as we were, single mum, living on $200 a month and she had two children to feed and I knew she was battling and I phoned Elaine and I said, Elaine, you better come for lunch too. Today we're eating. <laughs> you wouldn't say so looking at me, but <laughs> there was a meager time. And um, Elaine came over with her kids and we cooked, man, we cooked rice, we cooked butternut, we fried up the onions and we made one decent stew. It was delicious. And I thought I was eating, but I kept looking at Elaine she was eating and eating and eating and I was like Elaine like what's going on the way you're eating I think you haven't eaten in days she said I haven't and I said how is that even possible like how have you not been eating how has it been days she said I don't have money to feed myself I feed my kids and I was just oh I was so flabbergasted yeah I'd been fighting with God about our circumstances but I ate every day and here was Elaine two, three days, she would just live on water and feed herself and live on water. And I was just like, oh, man. So I said to her, well, today that ends. And I took those new pockets of food and I said, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. And I just split that whole lot down the middle. They had three people in their family. We had three people in our family. If God could provide for me, he could provide for her with the same blessing, right? And I was just like, I cannot in good conscience eat all of this gift while my friend is starving. And I split it in two. And off she went and I didn't think about it until four months later when we were still eating off of the food that God had provided for us. And I realized I still had the same amount of butternut in that bag as I'd had four months before. That God had made that food never a 
run out. And I just stood back. I mean, my head just stands up just thinking about it now. And I just said, God, you're amazing. We've been eating butternut for days. To this day, I don't like butternut. But for four months, we had butternut every day. We had rice every day. We had onions every day. And we had potatoes every day. And they hadn't gotten less at all. And I just praise God. And now, Would it be when you were little and you were in the shower and then the water all drains and you discover that it's not going to kill you? Not to put your hand on hot glass, like of a fire door. Why? Because I did that when I was younger and I burnt my hands. That some things you shouldn't eat because either they taste bad or they're not good for you. That's, that's the best discovery. Like, why were those things? Glue. <laughs> uh, and just glue in general. Any glue. Super glue is the worst. I've done that before. It's not good. But I'm discovering you've got a really cool piece of hair. Yeah. Uh, his name is Johnny. Johnny, my piece of hair that falls off. either make formulas uh, to make math questions a lot easier or discovering how to walk. They're both on an even scale, you know, like that, yeah. South Africa. Did you discover South Africa? Yeah, we went to South Africa on a mission trip. Yeah. That was a great discovery. Yes. That if you wake up in the morning on bunk beds and you, sm and you like sit up, you smack your head on the top of the wall, the roof, not wall, roof. Mm, I don't know. Like curing a disease or something? Discovering a cure for a disease, that'd be cool. Maybe, like, discover a place that hasn't been discovered or, yeah. It will probably be something like you know, like a new piece of technology or like tra a, w a new way to, of transportation. So that I would be like the modern day Thomas Edison or something and like develop, I don't know, into space traveling then. Or discovering a new planet. Probably, uh, probably a new technology thing though. Or discovering how to write a different style of book. Cool. Like the discovery of best types of pancakes, because pancake is my favorite food. And if I discovered the best flavor of it, then I'd be known for like discovering the best flavor of food. It's brilliant. Best flavor of pancakes. That's that's my goal. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Let me check this. Yes, we're good. 
What would you discover? Before we get started, I'd just love you to turn around, greet somebody beside you, behind you, you haven't said hi to yet. Give them a friendly hug, handshake, high five. All right, excellent. Now if you could find your seat again. You can continue your catching up afterwards. So let me just ask you all a question. What happened? When did your days become dictated by just that, your days? You know when someone asks you, hey, how was your day? When did the answer become busy? When did your dreams get stifled by the routine of the things you have to do every day? Do you think that's all there is these days? Why do you think it is that we have stopped discovering? Is it because we've discovered all there is to discover? Do you think you know everything there is to know? Let me take you back to a time a few years ago maybe when you were a child. Do you remember what it was like when every single blanket and every time you got out of the bath, your towel became a cape that you could fly around the room with? Do you remember when every couch got flipped upside down and turned into some epic fort? Do you remember when every puddle had to be this great ocean that you just had to jump in and explore? Do you remember when every tree in your backyard became this great kingdom that you owned? Do you remember when you were lying on your trampoline looking at the clouds and you saw all these characters in this awesome story? Do you remember when gravity was something to be defied and overcome? Maybe you remember running as fast as you could just for this, the fact that you could. Do you remember when you didn't actually need to be inspired? You simply just were? Do you remember discovering? When I was a child, I loved discovering. I grew up on this farm that was almost like the only thing you could do there was discover. So every Sunday, I'd pack my school bag, I'd put in it all the food I needed for my journey that day, I would get my sword, which was also a fence post standard, and I would pack my bag for the day. I would um, have all these epic things I had to do. First, I had to fight off all the bad guys. Second, I had to save my village and my army with me. So I would go and get my noble steed, my shiny, masculine, um, brave, fierce, epic, big, ferocious pony. And I would hop on him and we would start the day. We'd start this journey and it seemed like hours and kilometers later, we'd eventually stop and we'd need a much needed snack. I ate more than he did, but that's okay. And we'd continue on to our destination all the while fighting against the elements, the wind, the rain, whatever came our way, as well as fighting off these giants that looked a lot like my three brothers. Throughout the day, things would attack us. The day would go on and I had to conquer. I had to fight all these things off so that night I could rest victorious once again until the next week. At least that's what the story looked like to me. To others... It was this short, fat, overweight pony who just walked around in the paddocks while I lived out a motion picture on its back. It may have looked like this guy. But think about it. Can you remember when you were like that? Do you remember when you were the explorer, the heroine, the hero? When was the last time you were fueled with curiosity? When adventure just pumped through your veins? when you imagined the craziest things, when desire continually came into you to discover more. Somewhere along the way, we lost this. We grew older, we stopped exploring, we let this mundane, monotonous life just take over the routine. We learnt 
we got tired and we discovered just enough to know what we needed to get through day-to-day life. Blankets and towels have just become blankets and towels. Couches, just couches. Trees, just trees. And life, just life. It's pretty sad, huh? But don't worry, there's hope. Today is the day that I want to tell you it's not too late. It's time to remember again what it was like to live in those days, to wake up and really, really live life again. It's time to reawaken this discovery of journey. You are still you, that child that created, that child that dreamed all those things. You were created to create. You were designed by God to design, to dream. You were imagined to imagine. You exist in the space of where you are now and where you could be. Imagine if we valued discovering. Today we're going to look at just one of Grace Gate's core values, and that is the discovery, uh, the value of discovering. The reason that we exist as a church is something that we want to uphold and strive for in every single ministry that we have, and that is discovering. We want Grace Gate, this place, to be a church that we want to encourage people to explore with a purpose and surprise. Discovering is not just about knowing everything, but finding out more. It's this continuous adventure. It's new every single day, and all of us are invited. It's learning from each other, being guided when we're needed. It's having this active relationship with God that remains alive. It remains growing, expanding, developing, constantly moving forward. You see, God may be a constant God, but our experience and our relationship and our knowledge with him should never, ever be still. As a result, from doing all these things as a church together, we can't help but find out more about ourselves, find out more about God and where we fit into this life that he has created for us. It's this exciting journey that together we can all embark on. So why not start now? Today, that's our challenge. Many of you know Thomas Edison. He was this man who shaped the world with this passion he had for discovering. He's constantly on this journey. So many of you know him, things he's created. He's this amazing inventor. Just some of the things he created was the phonograph, the motion picture camera, and, of course, the long-lasting electrical light bulb. But did you also know that when he was in school, his teachers told him that he was actually too stupid to learn anything and he wouldn't achieve much with his life? And did you know that Thomas Edison, this great inventor, also got fired from his first two jobs for um, being unproductive? This didn't hold him back, though. He was on this process of continual discovery, this trial and error. It has been said that Edison actually failed 1,000 times. Can you imagine what it would be like failing at something 1,000 times? He eventually succeeded in this light bulb. And a reporter, cheeky I think, came up to him and said, hey, so how did it actually feel to fail 1,000 times with this camera right in his face? But he answered, excuse me, I didn't fail. Actually, the light bulb was an invention with 1,000 steps. It's clear that failure wasn't failure to him. Actually, failure was one step getting him closer to the solution, and the solution got him one step closer to his discovery. And as he learnt more about it, he eventually got to where he wanted to be. His discovery impacted the world as we know it today. Otherwise, none of you would be able to see me. So imagine if we valued discovering like this allowing nothing to hold us back, even if our teachers and our bosses or anyone says, oh, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough. Imagine if we didn't let any of those things hold us back, that even our failures we viewed as stepping stones to get us to what we wanted to discover. James Cook is another famous discoverer. Imagine if the great voyager, this explorer, James Cook, imagine if... He got just a few hundred kilometres away from the islands of New Zealand, which he had heard was there from another explorer. Imagine if he got that close and then he thought, 
Actually, I've discovered all there is to know in the world. I'm the great explorer, and there's nothing left for me. And he turned his boat around and went back to what was already known. How different do you think things would be? Luckily for us, he didn't turn back. He ventured on into the unknown seas. He would continue this search. On October 6, 1769, James Cook landed his boat in Poverty Bay in the islands of New Zealand. Two days later, he set off on this epic journey to continue. Not only had he found it, he wanted to go a step further and discover more. He set off to the process of drawing and mapping out detailed pictures and maps of New Zealand so he could share his discoveries and all the things that he found along the way, which eventually led to us living in this country, calling this place our home. If it wasn't for him, his discoveries that have impacted us, who knows where we'd be. But imagine if we valued discovering like this too. What do you think you'd uncover or what do you think you'd want to find? Discovering has moved us forward in life and usually it's forward for the better. Can you remember it's moved us forward from um, snail mail and writing letters and even from before that from the telegrams to cell phones, from emails to FaceTime, from drawing these maps like James Cook did, to the paper map book, to Google Maps, and now even to Surrey. From dial-up Wi-Fi, dial-up to Wi-Fi, from records to tapes to CDs to iPods to now online, from these tiny little sailboats that they had to row to these huge cruise ships, from the very first plane that just fit one person to a jumbo jet, it's this continual process of adventure. It's a continual process of a journey. It's a continual process of discovering. And we too can be a part of it. Under here, I've got something amazing. And I know that you all want to know what it is. Because this is my 15th birthday present. So just a couple of years ago. And... In our family, you weren't allowed a cell phone until you turned 15, which I think the world would have a heart attack at today. But that was the rules, and so I was waiting for it for so long, and I was excited, and I knew what I was getting, and um, the moment came. And who wants to unveil this for me? Kenny, come and help me out. Brace yourself, guys. This is the flashiest, the newest, the most exciting thing out. Let's have a look. This is it. Can you remember this phone? Did anyone have one like this? Yep. This isn't the one that the Aerial came out. That was the next upgrade. But you know what this phone could do? I could text on that. I could receive texts. I could call people. I could also play Tetris and Snake. Two games. It also got this faceplate, which is checkers. Personalized that myself. Can you imagine how excited I was to get this phone? Man, I was like, you know what? I am never, ever in my life going to want another phone again. I am happy for life. And I was excited. And I was like, you know, that's it. This is me. Can you imagine if I never upgraded this phone? If I was stuck in the brick big old Nokia phase of life. And imagine if I had this phone still today and then someone came along and said, hey, I'm going to give you the newest, the greatest iPhone 6. And I was like, hang on a minute. Can I play Snake on it? Can I play Tetris? Can I text? Can I receive calls? And they just told me all the things an iPhone 6 could do. And that's a lot, by the way. Imagine if I was like, uh, no thank you, thanks for the offer, but I'm happy with this and I didn't take the upgrade. Be pretty crazy, right? Actually, though, how often do we do this in life? Here's Jesus and he's continually offering us this amazing life that's so much more than what we thought. He's offering us a life of an iPhone 6 plus plus plus. And how often do we refuse that upgrade 
and stick with what we already know, stuck in the brick phone, cell phone way of life. There was this story about a guy called Simon. He was also stuck in this big cell phone way of life and the stage in his life, you know? He thought that he had discovered everything there was to discover about fishing. He was an expert fisherman. In fact, he was a second generation fisherman. He grew up since he was little with his dad fishing. Now he fished and he was the boss of others who fished. And he never had to tell that story about that one fish that was like this big and it got away because everyone just knew he was the boss at fishing. But little did he know that actually he did, hadn't even discovered the half of it. His biggest catch was still ahead. One day, Jesus was standing by the lake of Gisenaret. The people were crowding around him, listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were cleaning their nets. He got into one of the boats that was owned by Simon, and he asked him, just pull out a little bit from the shore. And then he sat down there and he began to teach the people where he could see them all and they could hear him and he had a little bit of space. He started to teach the people about God's word and things that would change their life. And when he had finished speaking and the, the crowds had gone away, he said to Simon, hey, pull out your boat a little bit deeper into the water and let your nets down to catch some fish. And Simon answered, and remember Simon is this pro fisherman, and he answered and said, well, first he's probably thinking, okay, maybe you don't know who I am and that's okay, but I'm actually a pro fisherman. I've been doing this all night already and there's no fish out there to be caught and I should know because, you know, I'm a second generation fisherman. But he said, Master, we've worked all night. We haven't even caught anything, but because you say so, I'll let down the nets. And they did. And you know what happens next? When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets actually began to break and snap. So they quickly signaled for their friends to come over and help them, and they, they poured the fish into their boats as well. And they, both boats were so full, they began to sink. When Simon saw this, he just fell on his knees at Jesus' feet, and he said, Go away from me, Lord, for him and his companions were astonished at the fish they had caught. Then Jesus replies to Simon and he says, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. They pulled their boats up onto the shore. They left everything they had, which had meant everything to them just moments before, because they had discovered something worth way more. When Jesus came to this earth, he saw people living in this old brick cell phone way of life. He wanted to help people discover that there was actually so much more to life. He wanted to reawaken that journeying in them, and he wanted them to know that there's a life of an iPhone 6 and more out there if only they follow him. Like Simon, Jesus wanted him to experience something just way beyond the ordinary, and he wants the same thing for you and I. When Jesus came, he taught something that was just brand new, Simon, who later on got called Peter, and the other followers of Jesus, they heard the things that this man was teaching. They were mind-blowing. They had never seen a life live the way that this man lived. They had never ever seen miracles that this guy could perform. They had never seen anyone else live out their life in action the way this man did. He taught something that was just brand new to everything going on around them. He couldn't help but want to discover more. You know, they were stuck in this brick cell phone way of life, but they knew that they had to let that go to discover something more. They had to let their fishing and their boats go to discover something more. We have to do the same. You see, they stayed up late into the night just to hear him teach more and discover more. They went hours, even days without eating because they just wanted to stay close to him to hear what he was saying. They even piled into strangers' boats just to follow him every time he went somewhere because they knew that whatever he was going to teach would help them discover more about their life and just change their life. Jesus completely turned the world upside down. Because of the man he was and what he taught, everyone wanted to discover more. He didn't just teach this normal set of rules. He didn't just do all the normal actions of a leader or a rabbi in his time. 
he, who was this leader, everyone asked. Who is this man? Even his disciples asked that. Who was this man that reawakened curiosity and imagination in people's lives? They discovered that everything they taught was beneficial for their lives. Everything he shared, they could take on board. And it's the same for you and me today. Everything he shares in the Bible can change our lives. You know, as they journeyed with Jesus, and as we do too, and if you discover more about him in your journey, you'll learn who you really are as the disciples did. They learned that their mistakes didn't define who they were. They discovered how to treat people and even step further. They discovered how to even love complete strangers and their enemies. They started to see that actually there's real power in forgiveness. And they saw the value in going the extra mile for people. They started to grow with more purpose in their life, more than the money and the things they had and more than fishing and their collection of what they had hoarded in the world. They daily discovered that the life of following Jesus was actually transforming their life too. Jesus' followers, they were just mind-blowing at everything they have. And who wouldn't be if you learned all these things? They couldn't help but want to know more. They wanted to see more. They wanted to discover more. They had to stay with him and in his presence more. As Jesus' followers today, we too want to discover like this. Imagine if we discovered like the disciples, if we stayed up all night just to hear a word from him. Imagine if we were just passionate about God, passionate about learning. Can you imagine if we were energized so much so that we would just go wherever he went? Imagine if you were constantly intrigued and longing to know more, that you would stay up, that you would read the word, that you would do as much as you can to go deeper and discover more. Once they did this, they discovered a life of abundance so much more than fishing, so much more than the old brick cell phone way of life. We can do the same. Today, each one of us, I want to let you know that you have an opportunity to embark on this journey of discovery. It's not something that just happened way back there for the disciples. It's actually still happening today, and you can be a part of the story. All you got to do is let go of the brick cell phone way of life. Jesus extends this invitation of discovering and inviting us to follow him. You know, the one thing he wants most out of anything for us to discover, and the one thing we here at Gracegate want you to find most is to discover a relationship with God, a relationship where you follow him, and it doesn't matter if, you, if you're rich, if you're poor, it doesn't matter if you're a spiritual person or you're not a spiritual person. There's not a bunch of conditions and rules that you need to tick off first. He invites all of us to experience a life like no other. Everyone is invited on this journey. Everyone sitting in here, everyone outside these doors, everyone is invited on this journey to discover this life-changing relationship with God. It doesn't matter who you know. It doesn't matter who you don't know. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter anything. It doesn't matter if you've never been to church before or if you go, if you've been going your whole life. Jesus offers this open invitation. He opens, offers it to you. He offers it to me. Jesus invites us into relationship with Him. He doesn't invite us into a church or into a religion or a whole bunch of rules. He invites us into a life of freedom where you have the freedom to discover things beyond your imagination. Doubt doesn't disqualify you either. And if you're sitting here and you're thinking, well, that sounds cool, but I actually don't know much at all. In fact, I don't even know if I want to know this Jesus guy. You know, his disciples that followed him around for years, even though they saw him had face-to-face -face conversations, they saw him perform these crazy miracles. They saw him and ate with him. They lived life with him. And they still doubted up until the very end. So it doesn't disqualify you. The invitation is still there. Imagine if we valued discovering what possibilities could happen. No one else offers what Jesus offers. This journey of discovering a life that has a greater purpose. You know, we're all invited to continue on the story of God like we read about from the Bible. It's still living, it's still happening here today. 
I want you to think about it. Imagine if you accepted that invitation. What would your life look like? What would this church look like? What would this community look like? What's holding you back from embarking on a journey that's going to be the journey of a lifetime? There's something out there waiting for each of us, something in this unknown spaces that we've forgotten about or that has just been there waiting for us ever since we were a child, born with this curiosity just to discover and explore. As we step out of this old cell phone brick way of thinking, God wants to reveal to us a new way of seeing. He wants us to see his plan that he has for our lives. He wants us to discover the things that were lost and he still wants us to discover what's going to be found. Today, if you feel like Thomas Edison and you feel like, you know what, I've just failed a thousand times in my life. Maybe you've lost hope in the journey of discovery. Or maybe you think, you know what, I just don't even have time to fit in one more thing into my life. Remember Thomas Edison and how he didn't view his failures as one step closer to failure. In fact, he viewed them as one step closer to discovering the imaginable. Think of the light bulb. Here at Grace Gate, it's our heart, it's our passion. It's the thing we strive for to make each of us value discovery. So no matter where you are on your faith journey, whether you're at the very beginning or you've been in it forever, it's time for each of us to take the next step forward in discovering. We're no longer simply just accountants or preachers or painters. We're actually pioneers created to create. We're inhabiting the space between where we are and where we could be, where Jesus wants us to be. Jesus sums this all up perfectly when he says, I'm telling you once and for all that unless you return to square one and start over like children, you're not even going to get a look at the kingdom, let alone get into it. Whoever becomes simple again like a child will rank the highest in God's kingdom. What's more, when you receive childlike faith on my account, it's the same as receiving me. It is time to dust off your capes once again. Imagine the unimaginable. Dream. Let curiosity just overtake you and embark on this journey. Imagine if we all valued discovery. Let us just bow our heads. Lord, we just pray that you help us to become our one desire and that um, our knowledge about you be the one thing that we want to know and the relationship with you be the one thing that we want to discover. And Lord, we pray that you help us to be a church that can change the world with the things we discover and the, the love for you that we discover and put out into this community. We ask that you be with us as we go from here. May you bless the rest of the week until we meet again and may you help us to know that you're also searching for us as we search for you.